Arthropod predators are amazing, diverse, and very tough. Not even the most gruesome sci-fi creature you've ever seen can compete with the amazing predatory capabilities that insects, scorpions, spiders, and centipedes have adapted for taking down prey. Predators have a hard life. They need to detect, capture, and consume prey that are trying their very best to avoid being eaten. Prey try not to be found, try not to be recognized as food, and try to escape from predators that are already attacking. To overcome these defenses, predators have had to develop new and effective ways to capture their prey. The constant evolutionary battle between predators trying to capture their prey and prey trying to avoid being eaten has led to an escalation of offensive and defensive traits that is sometimes referred to as the evolutionary arms race. We are so excited about arthropod predators and the amazing things that they can do. We wanted to share some cool examples of them with you. Arthropods are a group of animals with hard exoskeletons and segmented bodies that include arachnids, insects, and centipedes. They are some of the most diverse and highly adapted predators that exist. Many arthropods have specialized body parts that are specifically adapted for capturing prey effectively. For example, praying mantis are insects with modified grabbing or raptorial arms that they use to strike at prey in the flash of a second. A series of spines help them grab prey before it can flee and keep them from escaping. First, the mantis needs to detect its prey. Mantis have amazing eyesight, which allows them to detect movement from a good distance away. Mantis, like most insects, have compound eyes, which are composed of thousands of little lenses. What makes mantis eyes so special is that they have zones that allows for very fine discrimination and lets in extra light. This combination gives them binocular vision, which means that their vision overlaps to give them 3D sight, which is very rare in invertebrate. Binocular vision is hugely important for making accurate strikes on fast moving prey. Watch how the mantis focuses on this moth, moving closely within striking distance before shooting out and grabbing it. Once trapped in its deadly claws, the moth has little chance of escaping as the mantis' tough mandibles or mouth parts quickly tear it to shreds. But if you're a potential item on the menu, then you probably want to avoid something with such menacing claws. Unfortunately, this isn't as easy as it seems, since many arthropods blend in with their environment in order to catch unsuspecting prey. This is called camouflage. Praying mantids are very diverse in their appearance, which allows them to mimic everything from dead leaves to flowers. This not only helps them to avoid predators, but also enables them to catch unsuspecting prey that may mistake the mantis for something harmless. This is called aggressive mimicry, and mantids are the masters of it. Now, praying mantises aren't the only insects that have modified their front limbs for prey capture. Other examples include ambush bugs or giant predatory water bugs like the belostomatids. Belostomatids are aquatic insects that will grab anything underwater, including things like frogs and tadpoles. Another group of arthropods, the arachnids, have also modified their bodies, legs, and leg-like structures called pedipalps. Look what the scorpion's done with its palps. Instead of being leg-like, they've turned into pinchers, which can grab and hold on to prey. Another arachnid is the emblem pigeon, which has modified its pedipalps into long, grasping structures with knives at the end to spear prey. They've also modified their first legs into an elongated whip that's covered with sensory hairs that can act like an antenna and help them feel around for prey. Jumping spiders, or salticids, are the smartest of all spiders, able to undergo complex learning behaviors. They have exceptional vision, able to see all around them and with great acuity forward, meaning they can see small objects from very far away. These front eyes also have great color vision, allowing them to pick out prey which might be hiding among the leaves. They also allow for the spider to judge its distance away from prey and allow it to make a precision strike, ensuring that it gets a meal every time. Salticids tend to stalk their prey, just like a cat stalking a mouse. They also have strong back legs that allow them to leap great distances to strike their prey. Salticids are excellent predators, able to detect and capture their prey with high efficiency. Watch here as the jumping spider locks eyes on the cricket, lining up its body before executing the perfect strike. Poor cricket never had a chance. While we humans see vision as our most important sense, many arthropods rely entirely on different senses, like touch, to locate their next meal. How many times have you seen a spider's web like this stretching across some plants in your backyard or in the corner of your house? Unlike the non-web building jumping spiders, most spiders build prey capture webs that help them to ensnare flying insects. You can think about the web as a way of extending the senses of the spider. The spider might be small, but its web is much larger, and the spider can get a lot of information by feeling the vibrations coming from its web. 
This is particularly true for the gorgeous orb web that everyone is familiar with. This web is made up of very little silk, but each strand is stronger than steel and incredibly stretchy. The web is designed to keep fast flying prey from breaking through or bouncing off like it's hit a trampoline. The stretch helps to entangle and hold prey in place until the spider can come and wrap it up. The most successful spider families have also added a sticky glue onto the silk, which really holds onto the prey. When the spider senses a small vibration in its web, it's likely that a small prey item such as a fly or a moth has gotten entangled. But if there's a large vibration, a potentially dangerous creature might be in the web, and the spider can know to either quickly flee or release the potential threat. It's similar to how we can tell if something's larger by listening to its footsteps. Even without vision, the spider can make decisions based on the information from its web on whether they're gonna have a new meal or become prey themselves. Okay, so let's say you've detected a possible prey item and successfully captured it. What now? Well, for some predators like tiger beetles and sulfugids, they simply start eating it right away. Those same powerful jaws that they'd used to capture the prey are used to shred and prepare the meal for consumption. But sheer force alone doesn't work for all predators. Many arthropods use venom to subdue their prey. You can think about venom as a cocktail of toxins and enzymes used to immobilize prey. Venom can outright kill prey, or it can slow them down to prevent them from injuring the predator. Lots of predators use venom as part of their toolkit to help capture prey. This massive scolopendra centipede is an amazing predator. They have many fast legs that they use to aggressively chase down their prey. They grab their prey with strong venom claws located behind their mouths. These venom claws have evolved from legs, but have turned into powerful curved structures that they use to deliver a nasty bite full of potent venom. A scorpion's tail is equipped with a venomous stinger. One way to tell if scorpions are dangerous or not is to look at their claws and the thickness of their tails. Scorpions like this Asian forest scorpion have massive claws that they use to tear apart prey. But boothid scorpions have small, delicate claws that can get injured by struggling prey. To combat this, they've evolved toxic venom that is even strong enough to kill humans. Remember that venom helps prevent prey from struggling, which might injure the predator? Take, for example, the white-eyed assassin bug from Africa. It has a long, thin, piercing mouth part that it uses to jab into prey. This mouth part is fragile and might break if the prey struggles too much. After it strikes its prey, it injects an immobilizing toxin that immediately kills the prey. Enzymes in this venom help break down the insides of the cricket, allowing the assassin bug to enjoy its soupy meal in peace. For some arthropods, the strategies that they use to ensure successful prey capture include using each other. Just like how lions will help each other bring down and eat large prey, arthropods that are social will coordinate their attack on a single organism that they then share with their relatives. A familiar example is the ant. Social spiders that live in webs can capture prey much larger than the individual spider by building larger webs and attacking prey simultaneously. Social huntsman spiders from Australia hunt on their own, but they'll still share their food with their siblings. This way, even spiders that were unable to catch food can still eat thanks to their generous siblings. Other than the fact that they're incredibly cool, why do so many entomologists study arthropod predators? Arthropod predators are very good at what they do, catching and consuming a lot of prey. Around 75% of all known species are insects. About 400 of these are major pests that reduce food availability for humans. These insects cost millions of dollars in damage and affect world hunger. Humans have been taking advantage of the predatory prowess of arthropods in order to control agricultural pests and invasive species rather than using harmful pesticides. These predators are natural enemies for pests. We hope you've enjoyed these awesome examples of arthropod predators, but there's even more. You can even go check out some in your backyard and some you can keep as pets, like Stella here, my Vietnamese shield praying mantis. Thank you.